scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So when Jesus said upon this rock, he was not just talking of himself alone. Thou art Peter and upon this rock, upon this revelation, upon this template, I will build my church. What is the template? That number one, the church will only make progress. Their progress as a church and the formidability of the church to ward off the effect and the victory of the gates of hell will be founded on number one, their revelation of me as the builder, the Christ, the Messiah, he called it. Hallelujah. And then number two, that for every dimension of authority you are going to get an access in the spirit, there is a light component that empowers that revelation. Remember, we discussed Revelation chapter 5. I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scrolls. And the elder tapped me and he said, weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has prevailed deserving to open the book and unlock the scroll. He said, I looked towards the throne and I saw the lamb as though it had been slain, having seven eyes. I told you these are the seven major levels or realms of revelation that every believer must access. And connecting every eye was a horn, which is a symbol of authority. Authority in the kingdom is light dependent. The dimension of revelation you access if you access it in truth, has a corresponding level of spiritual authority that matches that. So, when you claim to have authority at level four, say, and yet the light level, spiritual illumination is level two, you only have authority at level two. Jesus demonstrated all seven levels of revelation and all seven levels of authority. The highest level of authority that the believer can command is the authority that comes through sacrifice. That was why even while Jesus was on earth, he was not walking in all seven levels. Is the reason why he could raise the dead, but he could not give anyone eternal life. There was no one who Jesus gave eternal life before he died and rose again. Everybody he rose from the dead died again. Everybody he healed probably went through the natural depreciation of age until they died. But when Jesus rose again, there was something he had in his resurrection that he did not have in his earth work. He could give them eternal life and he empowered the disciples. He said, now go. There were many times he told them go, but this time around, it was not just to go and preach the kingdom. He gave them authority, not only to forgive sins, he gave them authority to impart life, even life eternal by the spirit through the preaching of the word of faith according to Romans 10 from verse 8 to 13. So Acts 2.42, the Bible says they continued steadfastly. Please listen carefully. The first word I want us to examine tonight very quickly is the word continue. Continue demands stamina. Continue demands endurance beyond the limitations that emotions bring. It is very easy to start but continuation of anything is proof of the determination to remain there. It says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. The same way many of you have continued in this conference, right from the beginning of the week, morning, 
afternoon, evening, many of you have endured through hunger, through the sun, through the rain. This is what you are doing. They continued. Sound doctrine requires endurance, not just attentiveness. Are we together now? It says they continued steadfastly. Number one, in the apostles' doctrine. Number two, in fellowship. Number three, in the breaking of bread. And number four, in prayers. You would see the effect of that as God multiplied and added daily as many as should be saved. Please watch this. This is the apostolic template that was given to us by those who were mentored by Jesus first hand. This is how they grew the church and they built the church. These four components must be jealously guarded and preserved even as we look forward to this glorious move of God that is already upon us as a nation, as a continent and even within this dispensation. Many people pray for revival. We cry for revival but we do not prepare for it. The sons of Issachar, the Bible says, they had an understanding of the time and they knew what Israel ought to do. The Bible is full of people who did not expect visitations, but the visitations came and when it left, it left them barren of any experience. An example was Jacob in Genesis 28. The Bible says he came to a place called Los, where his father had, had a covenant there. And he put a stone there to sleep in Genesis 28. The Bible says he saw a ladder that was ascending to the heavens. Is that in your Bible? And angels ascending and descending. He got up and said, surely the Lord was in this place and I knew not. He said, this is the gate of heaven. He was not discerning to receive. There was no record of any transformation that happened to him by reason of that encounter. The next time this encounter would happen will be chapter 32. Having spent a total of over 20 years in the house of labor, he dismissed his wives, he dismissed his cattle. The Bible says when he was alone, a man now came to him and he held him. He said, leave me for the day breaketh. He said, I will not let you go. Now he was intentional. He remained with him. And he said, what is your name? He said, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob. For as a prince, you have had power with God and you have prevailed. And the Bible says, he touched the hollow of his thigh and blessed him. The sun arose. He called the name of the place Peniel. He says, for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. The Bible is full of men and women who had encounters. Some were changed by it some were not changed by it some were spectators and witnesses for instance in one of the synoptic accounts when jesus was having the experience of the transfiguration he was praying are we together now the bible says a, a cloud came and filled the place and then the disciples saw moses and elijah instead of them to be thinking of how to be changed by that experience they said it's good that we're here let's get blankets quickly because evening will come moses will want to sleep elijah will. you can see the response to a deep spiritual experience they were responding in a carnal way they saw moses and elijah they were representing spiritual realities but because they were bankrupt of the hearing eyes the the hear, the seeing eyes and the hearing ears they didn't know how to respond to that spiritual experience they were thinking of blankets to sleep so it's possible that you can have a spectacular move of god and your response to it is not to be opened and be changed you want to snap the moment and as wonderful as that is just to prefer to pre, to to preserve the history of the moment and not to be changed by it let me tell you this abel kuta we have said it time and again it is true that the move of god is coming upon nigeria like never before you go across the nations of africa and you begin to see a palpable formation of that move many of your fathers before they transited in glory they saw these days and they wrote it some of you come as physical descent from those that lineage many of them prophesied about the move of god many people who were not even africans they died and they left volumes of visions that they saw there has to be a generation that will leave the pages of those prophecies and by god's predetermined counsel 
it has pleased him that we become the generation that will herald that move of Jesus even before he returns but I tell you this celebrating the arrival of an imminent revival will not preserve it we must be able to prepare number one listening to the spirit to learn the patterns and the apostolic structure and formation that must be in place number two we must respectfully look into the past because the thing that is is the thing that was the secret of the future is still in yesterday yesterday traps the secret of tomorrow we need to study what happened with apostle babalola we need to study what happened with where did they miss it where did they get it not for the purpose of condemnation but the things that are written are four times the bible says they are for our learning that we through the patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope where did this man miss it and i want to just buttress on this because you see i've studied a bit about the revival the move of God across Africa across continents but particularly our dear nation Nigeria and the move of God that came especially around the 60s the 70s into the 80s there were two major problems that that move suffered I want you to listen carefully number one was that there was a spiritual divide of two groups of people number one there were those who were sound and their emphasis was on doctrine are we together now their emphasis was on doctrine and then there was another side by the reason of maybe their op the opportunity that they didn't have the opportunity to be as literate and educated they had direct prophetic encounters through prayer consecration and fasting and they received so many things they were open to the portals of the spirit in an unusual way and because of the power of their encounters and the corresponding results that happened they did not pay attention to the place of doctrine so there were two divides in this revival and let me tell you sincerely that formation that started as an imbalance still has an effect on the body of Christ today this is my final assignment and then we'll pray for the miracle even if we don't have the opportunity to take testimonies that's fine I need to be able to do this there is an apostolic structure that is able to host the move of God and to preserve it now across the body of Christ in Nigeria and even in Africa and I'm, you know my love and my respect and my honor for the body so when I speak I speak as one who is part of the system but I also speak as one who has been granted mercy and the privilege of God's grace there is this twofold formation right now resuming again within the body of Christ on one hand there are people who are largely inclined towards the prophetic and spiritual activities through the activity of prayer and fasting and they have access dimensions and all kinds of things prophetic acts that have come I can subject myself to 30 days prayer and fasting and in it I will see myself holding a handkerchief and wiping it on a woman's stomach and she's barren I mean the barrenness goes away I can return back with that revelation to execute it as I saw it is dangerous because I must leverage on the side of doctrine to now be able to put it in perspective the danger is if I ignore doctrine and I bring that it may work because it was from God but the next person who did not have that encounter but have access to the physical expressions of that encounter the devil why was the devil looking for the body of Moses to put a familiar spirit in that body and use the credibility that that body carried to mislead people is someone learning now so it looks like there is a divide in the body of Christ and what I'm saying is a bit touchy but please listen with an open heart usually people who are educated exposed and enlightened and I've had a lot of influences from the West for some strange reason they seem to be strong on the place of doctrine and the Word of God and that is profitable but many times our stay on the Word of God just focuses on principles and strategies and even philosophies and we ignore the spirituality of life are we together 
so most people will stay with the word and they laugh at those praying they laugh at those fasting to mean it's only uneducated people who are in the villages who are just prophetic people the more you are enlightened your enlightenment should show by your passion for doctrine alone this is wrong that already is going to produce a serious disaster in the body of Christ then on the other hand there are people who will not be able to explain anything as far as doctrine is concerned you cannot even come to them and be saved but you just tell them what is your problem and they'll say give me three days they will go and lock themselves and pray for three days and have a vision be taken to the back of your house and come back and say I found the answer I was at the back of your house and at the back of your house I saw a stone somewhere go and destroy that stone and in two days God opens up doors the mistake we are making is that this dichotomy was created by the devil listen carefully the dichotomy was created by the devil either through our pride and our, our refusal to see the value of both dimensions so we have people being mentored and raised by people with an emphasis up to the prophetic visions experiences prophetic acts someone will suddenly appear in church on Sunday morning and tell you I've come with something and he may not be lying I'm not talking about false prophets no but then another person will say forget all this nonsense we're talking about you just stay on the word of God and you find people who are learning scriptures but no results no power no grace they can keep quoting it sincerely in the name of Jesus Christ I won't be sick the headache is adding in the name of Jesus nothing is wrong with me and you are worse it did last year than it was and I'm not I'm not being sarcastic I hope you understand I apologize to you already in advance trust me I'm a good pilot we are going to balance this now it has become a thing of war you have to choose what camp you belong to so you have to choose the camp of word people you can pray for five minutes and say the most important thing is the word of god in you that may not be wrong but we need to be careful we're making a serious mistake and another person can say forget all that nonsense you just pray and fast and see what happens and they pray and fast empty of the word and a familiar spirit appears to them and they say speak lord for your servant is listening and misleads them introducing another confusion that is advocated with confidence because it came from an encounter are we together now yes. they continued steadfastly please give out that scripture four things number one doctrine these are the elements that sponsor an authentic move of God honor to doctrine comes from the Latin word doctrina it means a set of beliefs now reference from scripture that is able to build a disciple holistically they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine meaning the instructions that were committed to them because they themselves hand they testified that it was handed over to them it was not just an opinion are we together that all scripture was given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction in righteousness that the man of God may be entire complete a generation that does not have an appreciation for doctrine is a generation that will mismanage their spiritual experiences because doctrine defines the coordinates of your spiritual experience if you are open to the realm of the spirit and you have prophetic encounters that come by opening up your spirit you will need the stability of the word to give definition to your experiences to that is the tool you are going to use to vet whether it was sponsored by the devil or sponsored by God because Satan can appear as an angel of light are we together pastors and leaders we must no matter what kind of call God has given us we must be able to guide a people to have profound respect for doctrine now please look up there is a place you may have heard me teach there is a place 
for sharing your experiences and I call them personalized dealings. But you can never build a people by sharing your opinions about God and your personalized dealings. It is dangerous. By reason of my work with God, there are certain things God has programmed into my work with Him. It is just for me and Him. It is not for the people I lead. Now, because of the results that come from obeying that unique dealing, there are certain results you will see in my life. And if you want to ask me why I am experiencing those results, I will tell you this is the extra thing God said I should do. For instance, God can speak to someone and say, empty your account and carry the only house you have. Give it. It is not giving, it's a doctrine. But that's your experience. It's not a doctrine. So you may do it. And in two weeks, somebody will give you 10 billion. Someone will want to say, how did you become so wealthy like this? The moment you turn your personalized dealing into a formula to say, if you want 10 billion, sell your car, you may sell your own and for 30 years, you will not even see your destiny helper. Are we together? This is the mystery behind people acting out what they were told to do and not getting results. There is a difference between personalized dealings and doctrine. What we must teach the body of Christ is not just our experiences. Our experiences should be an added advantage to that which the word of God has already put in place. And Hebrews chapter 6 lists six doctrinal foundations of the church. Six of them. That before you attempt to step into perfection, or higher levels and he said by the grace of God we will we have to lay that foundation it is important that believers be grounded in the world please look at me if Satan appears to you right now as Jesus do you have a system through a sound understanding of the word to be able to discern and decipher that error don't say it will not happen if Satan appears to you he's not going to appear to you with horns no when you learn doctrine and you learn scripture you understand the character of god you know from the word what god can do and what god cannot do because we learn god through the person jesus and everything that was captured in the life of jesus is an expression of who god is we use jesus as our manuscript to correct everything the prophets told us about god no matter how sure they were, if we do not find it in Jesus, we have a right to probe their perception because they saw in part and they prophesied in part. Are we together? We will give ourselves to doctrine. Number two, fellowship. Comes from the word koinonia. It says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion, the fellowship, the participation, the sharing together of the Holy Ghost. Let it be with you. This is the second component that was captured in the early church that must be preserved in order to have the move of God in its purest form, fellowship. The first dimension of fellowship is fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The second dimension of fellowship is fellowship with the brethren in the house of God I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the Lord it says behold how good and pleasant it is Psalm 133 when brethren dwell together in unity that it is like the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron the priest and it flows down even to his skirt it says there the Lord had commanded the blessing even life forevermore they continued in fellowship there are many believers today who have a problem sitting in the house of God and listening to the Word of God and they will tell you my work with God is personal I, I don't need anybody that looks very sincere except if you are under a unique instruction otherwise you are already in trouble pick a life call look up please pick a life call from fire and just drop it away from where you picked it don't off it don't pour water what begins to happen to it community christian living is the key to sustaining kingdom values 
believers in the early church were always in companies they would always return to their companies it is something that if we lose your fellowship with the Holy Spirit is personal between you and him but do not lose touch with your fellowship with the brethren even the house of God component number three the breaking of bread the breaking of bread here does not just talk about communion no the breaking of bread was a um, would I say it was an expression that express love and unity please listen carefully scripture would always use the concept of breaking of bread to express love and unity it was talking about brethren and brethren the breaking of bread the revivals have been lost because of antagonism between one sect and another they did well in terms of learning doctrine are we together if you read the story respectfully speaking of um alexander the way and maria woodward eater it was one of the classic examples the way was a great man who god was using very mightily but something happened eventually because at the time there was no internet so you wouldn't know what god was doing here comes this woman who seemed to be uneducated who god was using very mightily and it was the voice that they trusted that began to criticize her and the way was a great man who god used mightily he commanded the attention of politicians and all kinds of people and yet this was the one who was fighting the next move of god Robert Lairdon said the current move of God always seemed to fight the next move of God because the moment God starts doing something new what God is already doing now begins to fight just because God is doing something different from what he did before does not mean he's not the one doing it till today in Africa for instance we still fight the ministry of women rising you see that now there is a way the Bible describes that it should be done but there are many people till today who do not believe that God can lift women like Deborah, like Anna, like Rahab, like Ruth, like Esther. They continued in the breaking of bread. If we want to see the move of God happen to us in a mighty way in Abel Kuta, listen, you must be able to throw away your differences and be able to embrace love and embrace unity there are certain dimensions of God's glory that cannot be captured by one man's spiritual experience no matter how faithful you are as an individual you are only an effective member in the body this is one of the things that I learned and this is why many times when I come for meetings like this I communicate profound honor for the leaders and the vessels here because let me tell you these men and women of God you see seated in front and some of you across we do not know you are powerful people with a track record and a testimony of the hand of God upon their lives and yet they come and open up themselves sincerely to listen to another man of God it is worthy of commendation and it is worthy of emulation because this is one spirit that is missing in the body of Christ is someone hearing now yes that means as a man a mighty man of God when you admit that there are dimensions that are not yet at work in you or there are dimensions you do not see you can sit down and listen to a man of God's message you can be blessed by it and it add it to your spiritual growth and it produces a holistic person love and unity please hear me Abel Kuta especially for the younger generation coming the spirit of competition the spirit of who is greater the spirit of whose prayer group or whose ministry is greater is a demonic spirit cast it out this night and cast it out in a hurry hallelujah i look forward to times when a man of god will be organizing crusades and another one will not know him and say listen i hear that god is doing this please i have five bosses can they help in making this happen and he said who are you it does not matter i i am just i know that you are contributing towards god what god is doing in abel kuta genuine love and unity the spirit of competition will always destroy people including sincere people and most of us younger ministers are being mentored now in a way that if not balance can destroy us <clears throat> <clears throat> 
when God anoints you and grants you grace make sure that the body of Christ benefits from the investment of the spirit over your life do not see another man of God or see another businessman and downplay the investment of God's work in their lives imagine that you come here there are many pastors here do you know as much as you see all of us here if the Holy Spirit is to arrange us according to our spiritual levels you will be surprised that some of us who are preaching to you now will be at the back in that queue I've known this years ago about my life you will be surprised at those who are standing in front who have a track record with God but they are the ones who will come and keep quiet right from morning to night is someone learning they continued steadfastly in doctrine in fellowship with the Holy Spirit and themselves in the communication of love and unity and finally I need to say this in prayers let nobody deceive you about the validity and the importance of prayer as far as your spiritual growth is, in, is, is, is concerned and as far as God's program is concerned when a people do not pray across a territory I assure you that territory is in trouble there is no such thing as I'm not a prayer warrior prayer is a responsibility a responsibility that is carved upon your heart by revelation are we together now you have a mandate to work out your salvation with fear and trembling you have a mandate to give diligence to these things to make your calling and your election sure when it has to do with prayer there may be people who are uniquely called and grace but he spake a parable to the end that men ought to pray and not to faint I'm saying this because there is a move that downplays prayer downplays fasting and makes it look like what is there the most there are people who don't serve God they don't pray yet they are prospering it may be sincere but they say mark the end of the wicked not the beginning you keep watching a man who has not fortified his stand with prayer is a man who is dangerous to himself and everyone around him. The revival that is coming is not just an intellectual revival with people who have physical value, engineers and doctors. Thank God for that and thank God for the seven mountains. But you must understand and you must realize that the realm of the spirit controls the physical realm. Are we together now this is my final word to Abel Kuta there is no such thing as I'm a word person there is no such thing as I am a prayer person there's no such thing as I'm a fellowship person the Bible does not dichotomize it if you want to be part of God's program you must continue steadfastly in number one doctrine number two fellowship number three the breaking of bread love and unity for the brethren and then number four prayers so if you find somebody who says i'm not a prayer person don't criticize him tell him you are in trouble that that philosophy is an attack from the pit of hell and if you find somebody who says all i do is prayer tell him listen my my dear one when jesus was done praying and satan came to him he said it is written not i prayed what helped him to defend satan was it is written that means with all of his prayer i wish i had time i would have taken you to matthew chapter 4 to show you jesus balancing the ministry of the word and of prayer he prayed and fasted but when satan came he never made mention of prayer as the reason for his defense it is written was what he used but when satan too switched to it is written the value of prayer to have created discernment was what helped to decipher his speakings are we together i am a prayer person no respectfully speaking that is wrong i am a word person that is wrong you may be well intentioned you are never given an option to choose between prayer or the word or fellowship or love for the brethren love for the brethren is a mandate and a command it has nothing to do with whether you like it or not you must love the brethren for how can you say you love God whom you have not seen when you do not love your brother whom you can see it's hypocrisy the test of your love for God is love for the brethren are we together I'll stop here so that I can speak over the sick speak over Abel Kuta and then we're done for the night has someone learned something yeah. 
please rise up on your feet they continued steadfastly in doctrine fellowship breaking of bread prayers doctrine fellowship breaking of bread prayers doctrine fellowship breaking of bread prayers all four must be captured in your spiritual experience all four must be captured in your church all four must be captured in your mentorship system if you want to see a people grow holistically i believe in what god is doing in nigeria especially at this prophetic time hallelujah now very quickly before we pray there's no point wasting your time you are here and you are saying apostle the church jesus said the church will be built on the rock and the first rock is the revelation of jesus in every gathering like this as you would read when you get to verse 44 thereabout he says and the lord added daily to their number as many as should be saved the truth is that there are people here from maybe tuesday or whenever this started you have been coming but right where you are you know that you need to make your ways right with jesus you do not know jesus sincerely and you have not made things right with jesus for others you are saying i truly need to rededicate my life sincerely wherever you are please give me the honor and the joy of leading you to jesus you may be the one person who your family is waiting for you may be that like that man in gadara i'm going to count one to five you want to make it right with jesus or a rededication leave your seat and run come right now wherever you are let's celebrate them as they come god bless you let's celebrate them as they come don't sit back there when you should come to jesus apostle i need to make it right with jesus abel kuta is this how you celebrate a harvest come come no matter how far come 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 who do men say that i am some say you are a miracle worker some say you are the one who give people jobs some say you are the one who give marriages some say you are the best of all the founders of religions but peter said i know who you are you are the messiah you are the messiah you are messiah you are messiah 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 you are messiah messiah listen keep coming do you know you can never tell how many trees come out of a seed you can count the amount of fruits that come these ones right now as you see them they may represent the mantle for the next move of god within this city there is no limit to how far and for some of you you are seated and you're saying apostle i want to come out but i really am not sure i remember i've made a decision like this before but right now the way my life is i cannot exactly tell if i'm serious with god i have a few seconds for you come out and join them as i pray there is something called the assurance of salvation come don't be ashamed that's why we are here for you come come hallelujah I salute every one of you and for those who are connecting by way of television or internet here is your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life sincerely no matter what else you receive the revelation of Jesus as the Christ the Christ does not just mean the anointed one it means the chosen one the one who was sent to die the price for your life was his life and he's giving you a new opportunity right now it doesn't matter how far you are veered off the Bible says that anybody who calls upon the name of the Lord that individual will be saved lift your right hand high above your heads ladies and gentlemen 
and say this loud and clear after me say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I declare that you are my Savior you are my Lord and you are my King I declare that the power of sin of Satan of hell and of the grave is broken over my life I obtain grace to live a victorious Christian life in the name of Jesus I am a child of God from tonight and forever amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for this precious people here in Abel Kota they have come responding to your call I pray Lord Jesus let this be the beginning of glorious moments in their lives according to the integrity of God's word I declare your sins forgiven and in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus I speak over your life that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life you walk the victorious life and in the name of Jesus you will fulfill your destiny in Christ in Jesus name I pray now please very quickly I want you to follow the counselor waving the placard all of you in concert very quickly please comply with the instructions and the demands they will make of you just for a minute or two and you will rush back to join us in the service let's honor them as they go celebrate them as they go hallelujah now very quickly I want you to lay your hands where you are trusting God for healing sadly we may not have the time to take testimonies because I have to honor the time we've stretched a bit but lay your hands there there are many people who came trusting God for a miracle did you come per adventure with any prayer request I'm not sure you did so I'll just speak generally over us I'm going to speak over your body I'll be done for tonight please lay your hands I believe in the healing power of Jesus you've seen the testimony of our dear sister who God granted a miracle miracles are real they are not stage managed they are not a figment of men's imagination it is a demonstration of the love and the might of Jesus lay your hands I want to pray for you you can also stand for someone who is sick far beyond this place and the power of God is able to touch them as I shout the name of Jesus I want you to shout a thunderous amen in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare that every spirit of infirmity that has followed you to this ground or followed those that you are standing in for by the power that raised Christ from the dead we declare that it gives way now from the crown of your head even to the soles of your feet be healed in Jesus name 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 Blood diseases be healed in Jesus' name. Migraines be healed in Jesus' name. Bone conditions be healed in Jesus' name. Any stranger in your body that has not been planted by God, we uproot it right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. And in the same vein, I speak over everyone here that has been in any kind of demonic captivity we announce your exodus now in the name of Jesus Christ eye conditions be healed ear conditions be healed heart conditions be healed genotype issues be corrected fertility issues be corrected failed organs receive brand new organs in the name of Jesus Christ and if there is anybody you know who has been given any death sentence 
as far as sickness is concerned maybe suffering from cancer or suffering from whatever in the name of Jesus we speak life to them we declare that they will not die in the mighty name of Jesus now I stand in faith with the fathers here represented over Abel Kuta over the southwest and I decree and declare the role you have to play in the global revival the role you have to play in the continental revival across Africa the role that you have to play as far as the revival in Nigeria is concerned obtain grace to play it with honor in the name of Jesus Christ dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline